Hello everyone. In this video, I will tell you about the different theories of eruption of tooth. These theories include governicular cord theory, hammock ligament theory, root formation theory, bone remodeling theory, dental follicle theory, periodontal ligament traction theory, bite force theory, and neuromuscular or unification theory. So let's start with governicular cord theory. According to this theory, the governicular cord is a fibrous band of connective tissue overlying a successional tooth that connects with the lamina propria of oral mucosa. So you can say it's a band that connects the successional tooth with the connective tissue of oral mucosa. So they say that contraction of this ligament causes the tooth to erupt. Though later it was found to be a remnant of successional lamina between bony crypts of primary and permanent teeth bud. Gubernicular canal is a redolucent area in jaw containing the gubernicular cord. It is seen as holes in dry skull lingual to the primary teeth. As the successional teeth erupt, its gubernicular canal widens rapidly by osteoclastic activity, delineating the eruptive pathway for the tooth. So as the permanent tooth starts to erupt, its gubernicular canal would widen due to osteoclastic activity. So we can say it aids in eruption of successional teeth by providing a path of least resistance. Next is the hemoc ligament theory. It was proposed by Harry Schicher. This theory assumed that a ligament is present below the tooth and this is responsible for eruption. It was later found out to be an artifact in the slide preparation. So basically there is no such ligament which can be named as hammock ligament. Next theory is the root formation theory. According to this theory, due to root formation, the apically directed force is converted to a reactive occlusal force that causes occlusal or coronal movement of the erupting tooth. So what it means is, as the root forms, there is a apically directed force and due to this force, the tooth erupts occlusally as a reaction. Now facts refuting this hypothesis are, number one, rootless teeth can erupt, some teeth erupt greater than the total length of root, teeth erupt even after the completion of root formation or even when the tissue forming the root is removed. So basically, even in the absence of root, the tooth still erupts. And the last one, the onset of root formation does not coincide with the eruptive movement. The argument favoring this theory is, in intraosseous eruptive phase, root formation and jaw growth lead to compression on the coronal side of the tooth. And dental follicle and stellate reticulum on the coronal side of tooth secrete mediators for bone resorption. So, as the compression is applied on the coronal aspect, the dental follicle and the stellate reticulum, they would secrete resorptive factors. And root formation leads to a tensile apical hydrostatic stress in tooth germ and tensile stress leads to bone deposition. So basically there is bone resorption on the coronal side and deposition on the apical side. Next is the bone remodeling theory. This theory is based on the fact that bone resorption occurs coronally and bone opposition apically. The dental follicle is the source for osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So resorption and deposition of the bone both are regulated by the dental follicle. Whether bone remodeling causes or is the effect of tooth movement is not yet known and both circumstances may apply. The strongest evidence in support comes from a series of experiments which were performed on dogs. In cases where the tooth was removed without disturbing the dental follicle or if eruption was prevented by wiring the tooth germ to the lower border of mandible, an eruptive pathway still forms in the bone overlying the enucleated or bound tooth by the osteoclasts. However, if the dental follicle was removed, then no eruptive pathway was formed. So we can say that dental follicle is also involved in bone remodeling. The molecular basis of tooth eruption also supports the bone remodeling theory. For example, Whenever there is a mutation of the parathyroid hormone receptor 1 gene, it is 
correlated with disturbance in bone remodeling and it would lead to primary failure in eruption. Thus, we can say that bone remodeling has a role in tooth eruption. Next one is the dental follicle theory. According to this theory, dental follicle is capable of inducing bone resorption coronal to the developing crown and bone apposition apical to the developing tooth. This results in formation of an eruptive pathway. Molecular studies reveal that the eruption is regulated by inductive signals between dental follicle, reduced enamel epithelium, stellate reticulum and alveolar bone. The coronal part of dental follicle regulates osteoclastogenesis and the apical part of dental follicle regulates osteogenesis. So, bone resorption on the coronal side and bone deposition on the apical side. The receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta ligand that is RANCAL is marker gene for bone resorption and is expressed in coronal half of dental follicle. Similarly, bone morphogenic protein 2 that is BMP2 is a marker gene for bone formation and it is expressed in apical half of dental follicle. Interleukin 1 alpha and parathyroid hormone related protein, these are secreted from stellate reticulum and stimulate the dental follicle to secrete colony stimulating factor 1 and monocyte chemotactic protein 1. So, IL-1 alpha and PTHRP are secreted by stellate reticulum and they stimulate the dental follicle to secrete CSF1 and MCP1. These factors cause the dental follicle to act as a chemoattractant for monocytes and these monocytes will fuse to form multinucleated osteoclasts. The CSF1 also downregulates osteoprotegerin which is an inhibitor of RANCAL and thus it is an inhibitor of osteoclastogenesis. What it means is that osteoprotogerin which is osteogenic is inhibited by CSF1 so that bone resorption is favored on the coronal side. Reduced enamel epithelium also secretes proteases which help in formation of eruptive pathway by enzymatic digestion of the collagens. Epidermal growth factor and transforming growth factor beta 1 released by the dental follicle enhance the expression of CSF1 in dental follicle. So, EGF and TGF beta 1 they are also helping in bone resorption. For eruption of tooth, the coronal bone resorption should be coupled with the apical bone formation and the expression of BMP in apical area is enhanced by tumor necrosis factor alpha and as we have already seen, BMP is a marker gene for bone formation. So, existence of BMP at apical area confirms that there is bone formation in the apical area. Next is the periodontal ligament traction theory. This theory proposes that the periodontal ligament dental follicle complex possesses the eruptive force due to the traction power of fibroblasts. Here when you look at the diagram, you will notice that before the tooth erupts, the periodontal ligaments are oriented in such a way that they are attached apically to the tooth and coronally to the bone. So, whenever there would be contraction in these collagen fibers, the tooth would experience a occlusally directed force and the fibroblasts are spindle shaped with multiple processes that join with other cells during the ligament development and you can see them as blue lines on the periodontal ligament in this diagram. Their long axis is oriented parallel to the collagen fibers. So, with contraction of the fibroblasts, the collagen fiber also contracts and this translates into the eruptive force. The problem with this theory is that the impacted teeth with formed roots fail to erupt and sometimes the teeth erupt without root and periodontal ligament, meaning that the periodontal ligament is not important for tooth eruption. The next theory is the bite force theory. According to the bite force theory, the bite force on dental follicle causes bone remodeling which leads to eruption. Now, examination of dental follicle reveals a broad area of compression over the crown and a wide zone of tension in the follicle below the root apices. 
so this results in bone resorption in the coronal part due to the pressure and deposition in the apical part due to the tension thus it aids in eruption the last theory is the neuromuscular or the unification theory according to this theory synchronized forces of the orofacial muscles under the control of central nervous system are responsible for active movement of a tooth that is signals come from central nervous system and they cause the synchronized movement of the muscles of orofacial region and this muscular movement or this neuromuscular coordination translates into active tooth movement the molecular events prepare a pathway for tooth eruption under the control of these neuromuscular forces the neuromuscular forces stimulate cellular and molecular activities within and around the dental follicle and enamel organ when these molecular and cellular activities are stimulated they prepare a pathway and other cellular functions also take place for eruption of a developing tooth so thus we can say according to this theory signals from the cns would stimulate the orofacial region muscles these muscles would then lead to molecular and cellular event in and around the dental follicle and these cellular and molecular events would prepare the tooth for eruption so that's all for now friends i hope you like this video and if you do like this video please don't forget to like comment and share this video thank you